The binomial theorem describes algebraic expansion of powers of a binomial. Now let's take a look at a couple of binomial examples. A very basic form of a binomial is x plus y. And we're looking at x plus y to the power of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. When we do algebraic expansion, this is what we get. If you pay close attention to the coefficients of the terms that we get after the expansion and then arrange them in a triangle form, you probably will get this triangle, which we call the Pascal's triangle. This triangle has the coefficient of the terms from the expansion of the powers of binomial. Do you see any special pattern in this triangle? You probably notice that along these two sides, the left and the right, we have ones. That's right. When we expand the binomial, the first term and the last term always have coefficient of one. And what about the middle terms? How do we get the coefficients of the middle terms. It's interesting to note that if we're doing the square of a binomial expansion, then the first one that appear in the middle term is going to be a 2. Likewise, if we're going to do x plus y cubed, then the second term will have 3 as the coefficient. Do you notice that? And it's symmetrical too. I have a 3 here, I have a 3 right before the last coefficient. I have a 4 here in the second one, also a 4 here in the second to the last position, and so on. But what about the other terms? As this triangle keeps growing, we're going to get more and more numbers, like these numbers, the 6 and the 10. Now take a look at each number. When you look at each number, also look at the two numbers right above each number. Do you notice anything? For instance, this 3 here, look at the number right above it. What do you notice? Look at this number 10, and then look at the two numbers right above it. And what do you notice? That's right. You can add the two numbers right above it to get this number. Now, if I ask you to do an algebraic expansion of a big power of a binomial, how would you do it? Well, actually, we have a formula for that, which looks like that. Ooh, kind of intimidating. How do you interpret this formula? This is what the binomial theorem says. This is the formula. Now let's look at each term. In this formula that we try to expand x plus y to the power of n, forget about these parentheses for now. Let's take a look at the terms. If you go back to the previous examples, you may notice that the first term, you, you have the most order, the highest degree of x. And then when you move on to the next term, you lose one x and you gain one y. And you lose another x, you gain another y. Eventually, you lose all of the x and you have the highest degree of y, which is 5. So this is what it says here. x to the n, which n can be 5. y to the power of 0, which is just 1. So there's no y in this term. In the second term, and then we lose one factor of x. That's why it's n minus 1. So if you raise to the power of 5, it would be 5 minus 1, which is 4, like this. And then we begin to gain the y. You see the y exponent is increasing. And then at the end, you will lose all of your x. And then you will have n factors of y. Now how about these parentheses? What are these things? Have you seen them? Okay, 
You probably have seen another representation of these parentheses. These are the combinations formula. Let's take a look. So this refers to NC0. Sometimes we write it like this. You probably have seen this when you learn probabilities, when you deal with combinations problems, which means I have n objects, and I'm going to choose 0 from the n objects. And the order does not matter. How many ways can I select those objects? So this is what it means. So it's n, c0, n, c1, n, c2, and so on. And n, c2 means I have n objects. I'm going to pick two out of the n objects, and the order doesn't matter. And by definition, n, c, r is defined as n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r factorial. So I have an example here. So 5, c, 2 is 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial, and then divided by 5 minus 2 factorial, which equals to 10. Now, this term, this 5C2, is the same as this 10 here that we get. This 10 comes from the 5C2, because this is the 5C2 term. This is the 5C0, 5C1, and this is the 5C2 term. And then you may wonder, what does it have to do with probability or with combinations? Well, let's take a look at this illustration. The expansion of x plus y cubed can be written as x plus y times x plus y times x plus y. And how do we get, how do we calculate or expand it? So this is usually what we do. We take the x times the x to get the x squared term. We take the x times the y to get the xy term. And then y times x, y times y. And then we get x squared and then combine the like terms, 2xy plus y squared. But we are not done yet because we're doing the cube. So we still have these parentheses. And then the next step is to multiply this x to all the terms we got so far here and here. And we do the same for the y. And then we will get all these terms after we combine the like terms. This is what we get. So you see that for each of the terms in the parentheses, it will eventually multiply to some other term in another parentheses in different ways. How do we get the x cubed term? The x cubed term is actually from taking the x from here, from the first parentheses, times this x times this x. So we have x cubed. Same for the y cubed. But how about the middle terms? How do we get x squared y term? Well, that means we are taking 2x from two of the parentheses and one y. So we could have taken this x from here and here and this y. Or we can take our x from here, but then take the y from here, and then take the x from here. And how many ways? Can we join up 2x and 1y? Does it sound like a combination problem now? So there are three ways because we have three parentheses. We're going to pick 1y or 2x in this case. So three parentheses, we're going to pick 2x or pick 1y. So in this case, it's n, which is how many parentheses we have, which is 3, c, one, just like what it says here, 3C1. Our n is 3 in this case. So this second term in the expansion is a 3C1 because we're going to pick 1Y from all these parentheses. So there are that many ways to pick the Y. Likewise, when you move on to the next one, 
Now we're going to pick two y's. So we're picking two y's from three parentheses. Picking two things where order doesn't matter from three objects. So there are three C2, which is also three, evaluates to three. So this is how we get it. So I hope now you understand why the binomial theorem has something that looks so much like probability problems that you have seen before.